Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Up the Ladder. As always, I'm Nate Stein, and today I have joining me Ashley Harrell, who is the current Chief Operating Officer for the Colorado Golf Association, though she has been involved with the CGA in many different roles for about the past decade. Ashley, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Nate. Looking forward to it. So let's start right at the beginning. When did you know you wanted to work in golf, or I guess that you could work in golf? Yeah, that's the better question. When did I know I could work in golf? Uh, we often say people never really grow up thinking I want to be a golf administrator uh, because no one really knows what that is. And I was one of those people. Um, I was a sophomore in college. I was up in at North Dakota playing at the University of Jamestown. And my college coach had previously worked for the Colorado Golf Association. And he told me I needed to go do this internship. So I did it after my sophomore year of college. Um, came down, interned with the CGA, and at that moment, I knew it was an opportunity for me to pursue golf administration as a career. So what did that internship look like? What kind of sparked, I guess, the passion for it, not just the fact that it was an option? Yeah, I think at that point in my life, it was less about the golf, honestly, and more about the opportunity to interact with kids. I was studying elementary education, always thought I was going to grow up, be a school teacher. Um, I come from a, a teaching family. My mom was a school teacher, so I was always interested in that. Um, but heard of the internship, and I was it was junior golf. So I got to be out on the golf course with kids and their families, all ages, 6 to 18-year-olds, um, all day, all week, all summer long, and I loved it. Um, I think I, I just realized at that point there were other ways to impact the lives of kids than being the disciplinarian in front of a classroom of 20 of them. Yeah, absolutely. So there, I find often there's kind of these sliding door moments in anybody's career journey. What were some of those moments that you feel like you made, maybe not a groundbreaking decision, but just some sort of decision that kept you on this path and eventually led to you being chief operating officer? That's a good question. You know, I feel super lucky. Once I got in the first door of saying yes to the internship, I feel like the doors just kept opening um, with little effort on my part, quite honestly. Um, there aren't many people, there aren't many opportunities in golf administration across the nation, probably more than you would you'd maybe guess, but it's a pretty niche type of career. Um, so, so I was just lucky in that right here at the Colorado Golf Association, I just got to keep saying yes. Um, after my internship, the timing was just right that our current junior director had taken a new position. So they hired me, um, thankfully. <laughs> um, and then I just I just loved it. I love working here. I love getting to interact with all the different types of golfers that we work with. Um, you know, and, there, and there's been other opportunities too outside of the CGA, mm -hmm. not, you, you know, in golf, you know, saying yes to working some NCAA championships, saying yes to working some USGA championships and just getting out getting to see how other operations work in the golf space has really been impactful for me. I find in the sports world, especially, it's fairly rare to have somebody stick with the same organization, or if you're talking about an athlete sticking with the same team for more than four years, you're, you're let alone a majority or the entirety of their career. What has it been about CGA and what have you learned along the way that's just made you want to stick with it? But some of the more subtle things. Uh, the, the easiest answer is just the culture of the people that I work with here. Um, we, we love it. We're a, a, we call it family a lot. Um, we do see quite a bit of turnover just in general, just for the point you just said, right? It's a, it's a three, four year gig for people and they, they move on to other things for upward growth or, you know, just interested in something new. But um, I don't know. I, I think for me, it's just been, it's been comfortable, but also challenging at the same time. Um, I've always found new challenges here. I've found new ways to interact with people. Um, and that's that's really kept me here. Sometimes I think I'm crazy. I'm like, this is the only professional experience I really have in my career, which yeah. is, you know, approaching a decade. Um, but but I like I said, I feel like I always get to learn new things and try new things and innovate um, here at the CGA. What are some of the things that you did learn along the way? What did I learn along the way? Um, say yes, but not too often. Um, <laughs> that, that's what I would say. Um, accepting new roles, new positions, new tasks, uh, but also maintaining a balance with your bandwidth, uh, with what you have going on at home. Uh, so that would be one thing I say I've learned in my career. Um, 
The other thing I've really learned is just trusting people, um, the people you work with. We work with a lot of volunteers also. Um, people want to be involved and people want to do a good job. So trusting them um, to, to do that makes everything so much smoother. Uh, we have interns. They're highly capable. They're wonderful. Um, and just giving them the ability to thrive, I think, has been something that I've really learned as a leader throughout my time at the CGA. Mm, that's great. So a lot of people will see a C at the beginning of a title, and it seems very daunting, very like removed and um, up there, I guess you could say. What does your day-to-day -day look like as a chief operating officer? Yeah, I love that question. Um, <laughs> I guess you could call us a C-suite. We do have some yeah. Cs in our organization, but um, I don't. we certainly don't look at ourselves that way. Uh, we're doing that type of work, right? Like the more strategic thinking, uh, what, what are we going to look like as an organization three, five, 10, 20 years from now? Um, you get you get to work in that way. But quite honestly, last week I was out at events setting up tents and filling coolers. Uh, <laughs> so I, and I love that. Um, you know, people have different styles of leadership, but I think here around the CGA, if you're a C, um, you, you do what everyone else does when you have the opportunity to do that. Um, and that's part of the reason I love working here. Yeah. So, yes, um, <laughs> you have a different set of responsibilities, but uh, on the daily, um, it's a little bit of everything for me, and it depends on the time of year, but last, like I said, last week, I was out running a tournament, mm -hmm. it was our U.S. Women's Mid-Am Qualifier, huh. um, we had an executive committee retreat, executive committee meetings last week, um, the USAM is going on out at Cherry Hills this week, so I'll stop by and, and check that out. A little bit of everything. We have really awesome community programs, so we'll get out to those and check in with our school programs. And we partner with Special Olympics, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and some other community organizations. So Amazing. it really is fun to just build relationships um, and watch your team su be successful. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you about some of the more fulfilling parts of it, but you already covered that and nailed it with that. The community outreach, it, it's so huge. It sounds like you're the right person to be heading those efforts up. So that's awesome to hear. What sort of advice would you give a young person, whether they're already involved with golf or not, that looks at the administrative side things in, in sports specifically, says, I, I want to do that, whether it's with golf, with basketball, baseball, soccer, any sport, what kind of advice would you give to reach the position that you have? Yeah, I think sports admin in general is a very, very interesting position. Um, again, with, with some of our recent college grads and our interns, we see it both ways, right? You see the people, um, the students, the recent grads or whomever who have a lot of the sports specific knowledge, who want to be in sports admin, those that played it, those that have coached it, those that just love it. Um, and then you have people who don't have the sports specific knowledge. Um, and I think a piece of advice is like, if you want to do it, you can do it. Um, you can learn it if you're passionate about it. Um, you'll figure it out along the way. Um, you, not so much fake it till you make it, but fake it till you make it. Um, yeah. If you want to be involved in sports admin, um, you, you know, you're maybe not interested in coaching or you know, what the other tens of thousands of really um, important careers that are in sports. The admin side is so fun. Um, you know, a little more business elements than maybe some other careers in, in sports, but um, you can do it. <laughs> No matter what, no matter what your background is, um, in our office alone, and, and golf is a really niche sport to start with. But we have yeah. comms majors, we have journalism majors, we have education majors, we have econ majors. Um, you know, very few of us are actually PGA, PGM certified. So the op the opportunities exist. That's very interesting. I would not have guessed that not everybody had gone through the formal training with the PGA or PGM. That, yeah, that's we actually have jump into it. We have two out of our 20 that are that are PGA on our staff right now. So, and we're a nonprofit organization. So there's a lot of transferable skills yeah. with, with everyone in our office, which makes it a fun place to work, right? You have this common interest of golf, but you all have different strengths too. Mm, love that. All right, well, as we start to wrap up, there's one thing that I like to ask every guest on the show, and that is to share a coach story with me. And that can be something that you've experienced at the CGA or we were talking a little bit before the show about your time coaching basketball or even when you were an athlete and something that stuck out to you in interaction with the coach. Yeah, I grew up playing so many sports and I have so many, so many great moments um, with coaches. But the one that sticks out 
and it's you know surprisingly kind of a, a negative story but um I was in I played college golf up at the University of Jamestown mm -hmm. and it's a small NAIA school like I tell people I'm really good at making bogeys I was then I am now like that's just who I am as a golfer which is fine um, but I am so grateful for the time that I had playing there um, and, and primarily that was because of one of my coaches at the time. So we were playing a, a tournament on our home golf course that I should know really well, should be able to score really well, or at least, you know, respectively. Um, and I had a terrible day. Like I shot a really high score and I can't even say it because I'll be too embarrassed, um, but you can probably Google it later. Um, <laughs> and after that tournament, I was, you know, I was a mess. Like I was crying. I was so upset. I felt embarrassed. I did not perform. And our coach, all he said to me after that, the only thing he said to me, he's a pretty verbose guy. He said, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Hmm. And I was like, okay, that's not the comfort I needed, <laughs> right? Like I wanted someone to tell me it's okay. I didn't let the team down, whatever it was. And I'm like, okay. So I go into his office the next morning and I didn't really know what to expect, um, you know, but, but really the I'll never forget the, the nature of the conversation. And it was pretty much like, A, I don't care what happened, but what I want you to know and what I hope you're realizing is that like, this is not your identity. Like your identity is not in that number you just shot. Um, it's in who you are as a teammate. Um, and it's certainly not in golf. So I just, I'll, I'll never forget that. Um, it just kind of changed the perspective on sport for me. And um, you know, I, I'm not a coach, so I don't have a daily interaction with players, but I know a lot of folks do. And that, like, that is so important uh, for kids to just know that they are not um, the number they shoot in golf or the, the points they score in basketball or, or whatever it might be. And I, that, that would be my coach story that I would pick. Mm, that's incredible. That, that idea of identity and it being tied to sports, it's so important. And as an athlete, it is so hard not to put your identity into that. Said so I have a coach who wanted to remind you of that. that that's phenomenal. That's what we like to see. Yeah, it, it was certainly impactful for me. And um, I hope I hope other athletes are learning that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for joining me, spending a little bit of time on Up the Ladder today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Nate.